So we at Behringer had a goal. Could we make the dopest, most feature-packed modular drum sequencer on the market, stacked with probability, polymetric, random mode, 64 steps, mad pattern memory, and onboard live jamming control? Oh, and can we make it the fraction of the cost of anything else on the market? What's that I hear you say? Impossible? Think again, amigos. Time to stir things up a bit. It's the RS9. So the RS9 is one of our most exciting Eurorack modules to date, and it's quite literally bursting with features. It's got 10 drum channels with a trigger and accent output for each channel. It's got a 16 to 64 step sequencer with easy programming, live recording capability, and a unique auto scroll feature so you never lose track. And with a massive memory of 256 patterns and 16 songs where you can chain different pattern arrangements together, the RS9 will easily handle any live set you can throw at it. It's also got four responsive and tactile real-time performance modes with individual track solos, track mutes, and the satisfying beat mashup modes of its step repeat and note repeat. And if you want to add some randomness to your rhythms, whether it's controlled or chaotic, the RS9 does it all with its built-in polymeter, random and probability modes. It's got full MIDI and USB-C MIDI connectivity with all the synchronization and clocking you could need, humanization modes with swing and flam, and a generous sized LED screen with encoder for easy editing of all parameters. And we managed to fit it all into a sleek 52 HP module with that classic RD9 styled look. Okay, so let's now do a quick overview of the main functions. And for the drums, I'm using the same setup I used for the live jam in the intro of the video. So channels one to three are each hooked up to a brains module and that's for kick, snare and hi-hat. Then I use the syncussion for, you guessed it, percussion. And the final track is using USB MIDI to trigger a clap sample. So first off, to dial in the tempo, we use the encoder. And you can also use the tap tempo button. Then there's the record button for when you want to record your steps. And then of course, you've got the stop button and the play button. So to program a pattern, it's super easy. As you can see, we're in pattern mode here. So I'll select an empty pattern, then go into step mode. And then to program in the drum you want to use, you simply select the channel and then we can start adding in the steps. And to do this, I'll put it into record mode and now we can start making a beat. Okay, so simple and straightforward as you'd expect. And if you wanna change the length of a pattern, over here we simply press the length button and we can select 16, 32, 48 or 64 steps. So I'll go with 32 and then we can select which step we want the pattern to end on. So I'll select the last one. And now when we press play, we'll have a 32 step pattern. So now we can see the second bar is now open to be programmed. So to navigate to the pattern, we can press auto scroll, which will cycle through each pattern as it plays, or we can take off auto scroll and use the cursor here to navigate to the different bars. 
Okay, so we can go ahead and program that in. And there we go, we've now got a 32 step pattern. So that was the step mode, and if we go into pattern mode, we can now use the steps to select between the different patterns. And then you've got the song mode, which encompasses its own bank of patterns and allows you to create different chain sequences. Okay, so onto the essentials for the live performer here with the track solo and mute modes. So pretty self-explanatory. Mute mode, we can use the channel select buttons to mute or unmute each channel. And then the exact same applies for the solo mode. Then we've got the trigger button here, which will trigger the currently selected drum. And we can also do the same with the channel selects when the beat isn't running, but when the beat is running, we can use the trigger. Then we've got the good old beat mashing step repeat function here, which is just endless fun, where we can use the trigger to repeat one, two, four or eight steps. And then you can simply select the step lengths here. And the note repeat works in exactly the same way, but instead of repeating the whole pattern, it will instead only repeat the selected drum. Okay guys, so that's the basic overview. As you can see, it's super intuitive to use, a lot of fun. However, I've barely scratched the surface in this video, but stay tuned because I've got a bunch more videos I'm editing where I go through the polymetric probability and random modes. I go through the deeper level of parameters we can change and also a bonus video where I use the brains modules to make a pretty sick drum machine. So that's it for this one, guys. Keep on synthing, stay cool. Catch you in the next one. Peace.